entrepreneurs, business owners, professionals who seek excellence, bringing the business classroom to you. It's the Business Builder Show. Here's Marty Wolf. We still got a long way to go. Yes, we all got a long way to go. Welcome to the Business Builder Show with Marty Wolf. The show for entrepreneurs, business owners, and business leaders. I'm Marty Wolf, your host for the Business Builder Show, along with my executive producer, D.C. Taylor. We will be your guides on this learning journey. Let me tell you my super objective in being with you today. I want to enthusiastically share stories and information to inspire leaders. That's you, by the way, so you can inspire others. I have a very special guest with me today, and he is calling in via Skype. And he's uh, kind of a local boy from northeastern Pennsylvania. His name is Timothy O'Donnell. Hi, Timothy. How are you, sir? Oh, great, Marty. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Well, I have to. I want my listeners to pay very close attention to this introduction because this is absolutely special. And it's a little out of the norm of our shows, but uh, Timothy has an exciting story to tell that will connect to uh, motivation and determination and all those kinds of things. So Timothy O'Donnell is one of the world's most successful and experienced American long course triathletes. In 2019, Tim went on to finish second at the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii, and recorded the fastest American finish ever, which is 7 hours, 59 minutes, and 40 seconds at the legendary race. As a professional, Tim O'Donnell, he has earned more than 50 podium finishes, including more than 22 wins at major events throughout the world. Along with the ITU Long Distance World Champion title, his other wins include nine Ironman 70.3 victories, two Ironman wins, and six Armed Forces National Championships. At the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii, Tim has finished second, that's 2019, very recent, third in 2015, fourth in 2018, fifth in 2013, sixth in 2016, eighth in 2012, and earned the top American spot four times. Tim is married to three-time Ironman world champion Marinda Coffrey. So did I say her name or her last name right? You Marinda. did, yep. And most people actually get her first name right too. They, uh, you know, it's Marinda, uh, but they they just see Marinda and pronounce it Miranda. So uh, uh, I think I got it right. You Marinda, got both of them right. Yeah, Marinda <laughs> yeah. Caffrey. You're on fire, buddy. <laughs> I'm on fire. And your daughter's name is Izzy, but short for Isabel, correct? Yep, yep. My wife's name is Isabel. She was thrilled when I uh, shared that with her. Hey, and folks, you know, we needed to reconnect with Tim. We had a difficult uh, Skype connection, but he's on a landline phone, and so we're going to be strong going forward. So, Tim O'Donnell, you recently came home to Colorado, I believe, from Kona, Hawaii, and as mentioned in the introduction, you had some success. So, tell me about that experience, man. Yeah, you know, I've been racing in in Kona since 2011, uh, you know, my first first time I towed the line at the Ironman World Championships and it's really been a big part of our career and it's the pinnacle of triathlon and uh, if uh, you know I wish your whole audience could get out there at some point in their lives and just experience that race because it's just such a um, a cauldron of, of mixed energy um, you know nervousness excitement all this stuff and it's and it's just an amazing day but uh, you know, I entered this year uh, coming off a strong uh, finish last year. I was, I was fourth place in Top American last year, and uh, every training was going really well. But I actually broke my foot about six and a half weeks out of the race, um, and I was wow. in a boot. So I actually did not think I was going to make it to the start line. Wow. And uh, through, I mean, full-on uh, kind of rehab and uh, pretty intense, um, you know, program to try to get back racing, uh, particularly running, um, running on the zero gravity treadmill and, and aqua, aqua jogging, things like that. You know, I was able to, I was able to kind of get it all together. I think I ran outside five times before the race this year, um, oh. in that last buildup. So it was, it was very touch and go, but it also changed my perspective on the race. You know, when you're, when you're close to that podium the year before, there's a lot of pressure to, mm. to repeat or even, you know, perform at a higher level. And, you know, with the foot injury, it just 
made me realize how lucky I was just to even start this race and how fortunate I was to be a part of this extraordinary event. Mm. So I went into the race with just, uh, you know, nothing to lose. And, and I, you know, as one of my physiotherapists told me to just, just, you know, open your heart and, and, and race and just let yourself shine. And, yeah. and that's what I did. And it was one of those magical days. I was out front, you know, almost the entire day from the swim. We had a small group of guys off the front and then I uh, found myself on the bike with, Jan Ferdano from Germany and Alistair Brownlee from Great Britain. And, uh, you know, Jan was a 2008 Olympic gold medalist and Allie was the 2012 and 2016 gold medalist. And I thought to myself at one point, there's three gold medals in this group and none of them are mine. You know, maybe <laughs> am, am I in the right spot of this race? But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it turns out it was, you know, we actually ended up dropping Allie on the bike and, and um, you know, came into to the run in second place behind Jan and, Wow. I had uh, my fastest run ever there off of, you know, very light run training. Yeah. And uh, it was super special coming across that finish line and just really being able to um, share in the excitement of the crowd and, and the special achievements that we were doing on that day. Well, I watched the uh, video that's on YouTube. And so this is an opportunity for you to tell folks that you have a podcast that you do with your wife. Well, actually, a YouTube. I shouldn't say podcast. It's a YouTube. How do people find that? Uh, is it on YouTube that we can find it under the Tim and Rennie show? Yeah, if you just head on to YouTube and, and just look for the Tim and Rennie show, uh, we actually, you know, the last two seasons we've been sort of documenting uh, not only our racing but our family life. It's very rare to have, you know, two athletes at the highest level of a sport. Yeah. Um, you know, just racing together, but, you know, then let alone, you know, um, starting a family and, and raising Izzy. So it's been a, been a giant adventure. It's a lot of fun. If, if you're not too familiar with triathlon, it's a great way to learn about the sport, uh, in a different setting. That's not, uh, too overwhelming since there is kind of that fun lifestyle aspect of it too. So, uh, you can go there or, you know, of course our website, uh, Tim and Rennie show.com. It gave me chills to watch that, and I, I already knew of your accomplishment, but uh, watching that, and that was just put out on the 18th, I think, so very recent. So, uh, yeah, it gave me chills. It was great. And, again, my connection to you and to your family in northeastern Pennsylvania, I, I felt even uh, prouder and, and really uh, special that uh, you accomplished that. And, again, broken foot six weeks out from the event? Holy yeah, moly. Pretty, <laughs> pretty crazy, Marty. Uh, I actually had uh, broken my foot early last year, and it uh, didn't heal properly. It was uh, The bone never recalcified, so it was almost just like scar tissue holding it, holding it uh, together. And, you know, I kind of re-injured that, um, that, yeah. uh, that same spot. So yeah. it, was, it was stressful for sure, but um, it also made it a little more special just because you're kind of overcoming, you know, one more obstacle in, in that great journey that is Ironman. How important is your coach or coaches? Talk to me about that for a minute. I, I have a lot to talk, a lot to talk about, but um, you refer to your coach actually several times. So talk to me about how important is that in coaching, both in the Ironman and then the business aspect. But let's talk about from the Ironman competitions, the triathlete competitions. How important is a coach? Uh, it, it's huge, Marty, and I think you know people see something like triathlon as an individual sport. And it's true when the gun goes off, you're out there by yourself and, you know, you, you know, it's up to you, but you can't do it without the right team around you. And I think there's a great parallel there between, you know, professional athlete uh, in an individual sport and, you know, in the, in the world of business, because it's all about putting the right people around you and trusting in the right people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do with my coaches. Uh, Julie Dibbins is, um, you know, a former world champion, great friend of mine. We've been friends here um, in Boulder for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And she not only knows how to coach and knows, you know, uh, the details of the sport and how to properly train, but she knows me as a person. That's important. And yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, yeah, have, that's to, important. you have to um, you know what you're dealing with and what's going to motivate an athlete and, um, you know, or, or what's going to, uh, you yeah. know, maybe uh, get an athlete's head. And, yeah. and that's a big part of it. And then, you know, to her testament, you know, some coaches can get sort of uh, possessive and, and not want to bring in other people mm. um, into mm. the mix. You know, they don't want to, you know, maybe show that they don't know everything. But Julie has, um, you know, especially as a former professional athlete, her ego um, to have, does not get in the way of her professionalism. And she knows when there's something that, that she doesn't have a full grasp on, you know, she'll bring in a run specialist for something or, you know, she'll bring in uh, my current cycling coach, Matt Bottrell, 
uh-huh. uh, just to make sure that we have all the tools needed to be successful. Well, there are parallels between that and business, but when you go to work, that's a lot different than when I go to work. Um, <laughs> and so, so I'll give you a little more credit for that because I, uh, I don't bike 26 miles or anything crazy like that, but, but there are some parallels. So you had an interesting path. And so this is where I want to go next. Out of Northeastern Pennsylvania, kind of grew up here as I understand it. You weren't born here. Uh, I suppose you were born in Boston. Can I take a wild guess? You know, actually, I was born in Florida, Marty. Really? Um, I was my, wrong. Uh, yeah, my dad, uh, we had a, he, uh, I was working for uh, some of the corporate automotive uh, companies back in the day. There you go. Okay. So just a lot of transfers. We li- I lived in, I can't even, we don't have enough time to name all the states that I've lived in. <laughs> well, I know, you're, I know your dad, and so the Boston accent is still pretty strong, right. but let's, yep. not, let's yep. not go there. <laughs> so starting out, I'm going to start from northeastern Pennsylvania, and you had stops in the United States Naval Academy and... And University of California, Berkeley, those are high achieving kinds of things. So did, did was there an aha moment in you or did something happen over time or you just decided that you have the, you had this drive for achievement or success? Talk to me about that. Yeah, I think, you know, part of it is definitely the family atmosphere that we were in. I was the youngest of four and we were always very competitive. Um, mm. So. There's always that motivation to, um, you know, surpass what uh, the other, you know, siblings mm-hmm. are doing. And, mm-hmm. and I always joke, my oldest brother, Thomas, uh, who actually got me into triathlon, we were both distance swimmers. He uh, went to the Naval Academy, then I went to the Naval Academy, and he got into triathlon, then I went into triathlon. Wow. So I just joked, I try to do everything that Thomas did uh, a little <laughs> bit better. Um, <laughs> but yeah. honestly, I, you know, I just, yeah, I think I've always just wanted to put, my heart and into everything I do, um, and enjoy, you know, I was actually the worst swimmer in our family mm. growing up, um, by far and the, the least talented athlete. And I would, I remember actually going to some of the swim meets, uh, the championship meets where I didn't make the qualifying time mm-hmm. and, and I was actually lugging the lawn chairs for the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> siblings. So they'd have somewhere to sit in between the races while I watched. Well, but it didn't matter. I loved swimming. I had such a great time, and I loved challenging myself in the water. Um, at one point, you know, my coach actually had a running tally on how many days straight I'd swum um, without missing a practice. And uh, I think it was finally Christmas um, where my mom wouldn't let me go to swim. My coach said, hey, I'm going to come in if you want to come in to swim, Tim. And my my mom finally put her foot down. Uh, so that ended my uh, my streak of, uh, of of practices. But that's just always been kind of the way way I've approached things. And yeah. same thing with you know school. And I, I was never you know always um, great you know great marks and things like that. But it was more out of um, taking the time to figure things out. I, I maybe it's being stubborn, but. You know, I wouldn't shut a book well, until I, I figured out what I was, you know, trying to uh, yeah. learn. Well, that search for excellence, we'll call it that, that desire to do and be something special is, uh, is a rare trait. Um, you know, we see it, and there are people like you, and I admire you, and but the United States Naval Academy, you don't just wake up one morning and decide to go there. I mean, it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a triathlon by itself. So, you know, I, I would think, and obviously Berkeley was no cakewalk, and you have a couple different degrees. So there was this time, I guess, between becoming a professional athlete. So, kind of tell me a couple of paths that maybe you're on before you got to that point. Sure. Uh, so I, I went to Berkeley right out of the academy, and if anybody's familiar with the service academy, there's a five-year commitment mm-hmm. um, upon graduation when you're commissioned as an officer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd actually qualified for a program called the Immediate, immediate uh, Graduate Education Program, where if you were in the top, I think, 50 in the class at the academy, and you got a scholarship to one of the participating universities, they'd let you go. So, um, you know, that was something I was really interested in, and, and you know, made sure I checked all the boxes and, and got accepted, and you know, part of it for me was just <laughs> figuring out how I could keep racing triathlon. Mm. You know, and going to Cal, uh, I was able to, um, you know, keep racing. And uh, there I was started racing at the Armed Forces National Championships, where I started to gain uh, the attention of the higher-ups with Navy Sports. And um, all the branches of the uh, service, they have actually sports programs, mm-hmm. uh, kind of Olympic pi- pipeline programs. 
so, you know, while I was at Cal and racing, and then when I went to my command in San Diego, which was special operations or explore, uh, explosive ordnance disposal, I had, by that time I'd gotten the attention of the higher-ups, and they yeah. wanted to support me in this Olympic effort. And mm. I really became an ambassador for the Navy through sport. You know, really? Traveling the world and, uh, you know, doing some stuff with uh, local Navy PR. and That's fascinating. Uh, things like that. Yeah, and recruiting. So, wow. uh, yeah. It was really, really a unique naval career. Um, my family was very glad I did not go too far down the uh, pipeline of pipeline of bomb disposal as I'm known as the clumsy one in the family so <laughs> I figured that was very safe for me to stay away from that stuff stay away uh, from bombs you learn to run away from those kinds of things right right <laughs> oh that's a trip hey I want to make sure I say it because I'm not saying enough my guest is Timothy O'Donnell yes he has his own website timothyodonnell.com but I'm pretty confident he wants to drive you to the Tim and Rinny show you can find them on YouTube you'll want to go there as fast as you can rinny is r-i-n-n-y tim and rinny that's his bride and of course you'll also see some stuff about izzy their young daughter on there but check him out um so special career so along the path um your dad kind of told me a funny story the last time we're together that i i I don't know let's get your interpretation of what how you became a professional athlete athlete (laughs) he gave me his now i want to hear your version how did you make that switch? Because that's a big switch. You devote your life to this. You need sponsors. You need time. You, that's a big deal. So tell me it, about it, man. It, it is, and it's it's a hard sport to really um, to make a career. It's you know it's not one. It's not a you know one of the big sports like the NFL and you know Major League Baseball things like that. So you really have to be scrappy in order to to put together a career in the sport. Sure. And. It just happened, uh, you know, I was, you know, in the, still in the Navy, and I missed the Olympic trials, um, or I went to Olympic trials, and I missed the Olympic team in 2008, and my boss in San Diego actually happened to be a professional triathlete when he was young, and, you know, he said, Tim, you've done what the Navy's asked you to do, and, and I'm sure you have some internal pressure that thinks you need to stay and do, you know, the quote-unquote kind of, you know, real work that you were supposed to do. But in all honesty, you have a gift and you should go chase this dream. Mm. Um, so kind of with my boss's blessing um, from my command, uh, I said, all right, you know, let's do this. Let's transition from the Navy and, and um, just see if I can become a professional triathlete. And I had enough money saved up that I figured I could race for probably a year, year and a half. Mm-hmm. And I packed my stuff up and I moved to Boulder, which is sort of the triathlon mecca of, mm-hmm. of the U.S. And I just started racing. Um, hmm. or, you know, and I had had some great success in training up until that point, but I hadn't really, tra- um, kind of, um, moved that into my racing yet. I hadn't realized it in my racing and my parents thought I was crazy. Here I am. <laughs> That's what your dad I a, said. <laughs> you know, I got a job. I got a guaranteed paycheck. I've got full health coverage. Um, you know, I had a pretty sweet gig, right? Yeah. And I'm going to give it all up, uh, for no guarantee of anything, you know, no, I had no sponsors at the time. Go I was for only it, racing for prize money. Um, you know, probably would find myself couch surfing before I knew it if I had, didn't win some races. So, you know, they thought I was, I was really insane. But for me, I had seen my progress in training and a lot of people hadn't seen that. So for me, it wasn't as risky as I think a lot of people thought it was. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I said, you know what? You're young. You don't have anything to lose. You don't have a family yet. You can take some risk and why not take a bet on yourself? And I love it. I you know, love I did it. that and, and it really paid off. That's fantastic. We need to start wrapping up, believe it or not. Uh, we could talk for, uh, for hours. Um, but tell me as simply and quickly as you can, and that's unfair, I know, but the quest to get those sponsors, just how difficult was that? It, yeah. <laughs> as he hesitates getting, to answer. Getting uh, the attention uh, of the right people is definitely hard. And, you know, I, and I learned really quickly that, you know, as in much of life, it's all about um, relationships and who you know. And, you know, I just started um, not asking for anything, just um, trying to meet people and get to know them. Hmm. And then, you know, hey, kind of slowly, hey, maybe just get some product, you know, don't pay me, but, you know, let me prove myself. Mm-hmm. And I just started trying to establish those relationships. And Smart. It's, it's been a huge part of, of the 
business side of my career because, you know, people move around and all of a sudden, you know, someone that you formed a relationship at this company now works for this company and they want you to do something with them. And I've really found that that whole network has been a big part of uh, my success on the business side of the sport. Wow, that's such solid advice. So my guest has been Timothy O'Donnell. Timothy O'Donnell is one of the world's most successful and experienced American long course triathletes. In 2019, just very recently, Tim went on to finish second at the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii, and recorded the fastest American finish ever. Tim, congratulations on that. Tell me your websites again and how people you want people to reach out to you. And, hey, they can buy stuff. I just bought your hat. So <laughs> yeah, tell us right. where we can get that stuff, man. Yeah, just head to timandrinnyshow.com. And uh, there's a link to our YouTube channel there. And then there's all our whole content pool with great photos. And, and of course, uh, our shop where you can uh, buy some pretty cool swag. Yeah. Hey, Tim, it's been a real honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us on the Business Builders Show. Thanks, Marty. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Builders Show. To learn more about me, and I'm Marty Wolf, go to MartyWolfBusinessSolutions.com. That's MartyWolfBusinessSolutions.com. To learn more about Kelly Hoey, go to her website, which is jkellyhoey.co. That's jkellyhoey.co. And, of course, you can find Kelly and Marty on LinkedIn and Twitter. A reminder, you can find all our Business Builders shows on iTunes, Spotify, and on your favorite podcast app. Bringing the business classroom to you. It's the Business Builders Show with Marty Wolf.